So he going into letting us know who we are according to the Bible. Watch this. Go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Before you leave, because it's one thing to know that we are serving, but what are we supposed to be doing? Bring it out. What are we supposed to be doing? Read that for me. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh -huh. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. It said, God said the children of Israel are holy people unto him. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself uh -huh. above all people. Now, is that equality? What did God just say we're supposed to be? Above all people. That the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we're supposed to be above all people on this earth. Why you think we just, we just, who made the stoplight? We did. You put us in basketball when they had hundreds of years ahead of us who run the league now. What about baseball? We run that league too because it's the so-called Dominicans and Puerto Ricans. They run that league. You got to think about it. One black man played tennis. Tiger Wood took it over. Tennis. The, the, I mean, yeah, golf, I mean, tennis. Serena and Vince women took it over. Why is that? Because read that again. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. We must be above all people on the face of the earth. That's right. All people. All people upon the face of the earth. They don't like to hear that. He was shaking his head the whole time. But he knew. He knew his people can't mess with our people. Because you got to think about it. The, the, the sun gives them skin cancer. It don't do that to us. It tears their skin apart because God set us apart. We're supposed to be above all people. Read it again. For, the, for thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people. Do, do they read that to us in church? No, nah, they don't. They don't read that to us in church because the pastors don't know we're supposed to be above all people. You studied when you was a kid? Yeah, I, I went to Park Hold on, before you go, I got to show you how to get the kingdom of heaven before you leave, brother. Okay, did they did they read that one to you while you was in school? You see? It's so, see, even they schools don't teach us that we're supposed to be above. The way I am. Okay, okay. That's good that you for your people. Watch this. I'm going to show you how to get the kingdom of heaven because you asked, right? You said you've been studying all your life when you were little and you still don't know how to get there. But I'm going to help you out right now. Read that for me. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Somebody came to Christ and said, How do I get eternal life? The kingdom of heaven, rulership. Because when you see right now, do you want eternal life in this, this state of mind that our people are in right now? No, man. We drug, we drugged out. Our women are thotted out, whored out. You know what I'm saying? Our community is towed up. It is, right? I know as a man of your age, you done seen how far we have fallen. You seen when we was trying to unify in the 70s, in the 80s. You seen that. And now look at it now. Young men shoot each other down like it's nothing. Like they drink, they shoot it down like they drinking water. Like it's just easy. That's right. Read. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Huh? That is God. Read. But if thou wilt enter into life. But if you want the kingdom of heaven, keep the commandments. You got to keep the commandments. Have you heard of that before? Why, why doing your studying? What commandments are we supposed to be keeping? All of them. So you, you know there's more than 10, right? Watch this. You keeping a commandment right now that you ain't even know. Watch this. I'm going to read it to you. Give me that Leviticus 21. Bring it out. I got to read it to you because it should make you feel good. That's what you're supposed to do. That's why God gave you two ears and one mouth. So you can listen up. Watch this. Watch this. I got to show you keeping a commandment. Let me show you how God feel about that thing. Read this. This is book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. They said we ain't supposed to bald our head off. Does T.D. Jakes got a bald head? Yeah, he do. So is he doing what God say do? Is he doing what God say do? But he supposed to be a godly man. You got your hair. But T.D. Jakes, who's supposed to be leading our people through the word of God, he breaking that first commandment right there. Read. 
Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither we're supposed to shave a beard. You see, you got your beard right there. Did you? See, that's a commandment. I guarantee you didn't know that in church. How y'all sisters doing? We over here teaching our people who we are according to the Bible. If I asked you your nationality, what would you say, sis? African American. What about you, sis? What about you, sis? African American. African American. Judah? Okay, we're going to get there. I like how you, you observe it. You observe it. Okay, but the term, can you get a plane ticket to African American? Okay, so that can't be a place. Because if you say, if I'm Chinese, say I'm from China, I'm China, you can get a plane ticket there. An African can get a plane ticket to Africa. Why, so, why can't the so-called blacks get a plane ticket to where they're from? Because African Americans come from two different white men. Go to Isaiah 1 and 3. Watch this. Isaiah 1 and 3. Because you believe we're in the last days, right? That we, the, the world is getting wicked and wicked and wicked. You see they shooting each other down like it's nothing. That's, they wasn't doing that before. Okay, that's true. That's very true. But if this your son, your nephew, your son, okay. So you said the government got it. You teach your son right from wrong, correct? Correct. So you teach him that he shouldn't steal, right? So if I drop my wallet on purpose in front of him, is it my fault that he picked it up, or is it the parents' fault that he picked it up? How is it my fault if the parents taught him thou should not steal? And, and, and gave it back. Okay, okay. I, it's, you said it's fair game. Dang. So that. So. Okay. So now she just said it's the government fault on why they killing. So if the government fault they dropping guns in our neighborhood is it they fault that we're using them. That's the same thing as the wallet. It's, it's their fault that we're using them. How? But, okay, but if the parents taught their kid thou should not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt love thy brother with all thy heart. From the youth, if the parent taught that, would he pick up that gun? I could say it bold and probably my son wouldn't touch that gun. But if you taught him from the youth, but did you teach him according to the word of God? But, okay, watch this, watch this, watch this. Isaiah 1 and 3. We're going to read something real quick. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and his ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know. He said the ass knows his master's, he knows his owner. So that's a donkey, he knows who owns him. But Israel, they don't know who they are. In the last days, we call ourselves black, African American, they, they call themselves real niggas. We call ourselves all of the above. But God called us the children of Israel. That's right. So if, are we teaching and coming up as being teaching in Israel? Well, because watch this, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Let's go back. Hey, what's going on, young brothers? I'm going to show you how God feel about the children of Israel, which is so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let's read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people. Are we being brought up like that? You see, uh, you said you've been baptized. Do they even read that in church? No, because the pastors ain't doing nothing but taking our money. They don't even tell us that we're the children of Israel. And God just said, what about us? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Is that equality? So why are we fighting for equal rights when God already told us that we're above all people that's upon the face of the earth? We know it. We, can, we, we know it in our spirit, but we just can't see it physically because when you look about our communities it's trotting down with murder and drugs and all of all the above but when you go to the, the other nations neighborhood they live in good right because we not because we not living according to God because we don't know how God feel about us he don't know that we separate that we supposed to be above all people let me read you why Jeremiah 17 Jeremiah 10, 17 and 4 this is the reason why we don't know that we are above all nations upon the face of the earth. Because one thing we think, when we look at this image, who is that? Who that is? They say that's who? They say that's Jesus, don't it? They, but that's what they say, though. 
So when we look, so when we look at movies, they got this image there. When we go to the church, they got this image there. So what they doing is showing us that this is Jesus. He can do no wrong. But when we see somebody that looks just like us, oh, that's just a nigga. That's just a nigga. I, I don't mind hitting his wife. I don't mind killing him. I don't mind stealing from them. Because we only see God in him knowing this is the damn beast. This is the, this is the devil the Bible speak of. Right. Watch this. I'm going to read you out the scriptures that everything I'm saying is biblical. Watch this. Read that. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. Yo. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage. It said that the Israelites are going to be discontinued from a heritage. What are some of the things that go along with your heritage? Your food, your culture, the things you celebrate, the clothes you wear. Right. So Christmas, we celebrate Christmas. Birthdays, the other nations celebrated that by killing us. But we celebrate that now because we've been discontinued from our heritage. Read. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies. Say it's going to cost us to who? Serve thine enemies. Do y'all believe we serve our enemies today? Where you going, brother? Do you believe we serve our enemies? We do, because look, who is Fica? Who is Fica? You don't know, but he, he get his cut before you get your cut. What's a two-way street? I'm just saying, it's just, you know, it's hard to try to wash away something and make people believe something that they've been taught for generations. Like, you know, he can walk for generations. Oh, so, okay, look. We, we need enough to get the church and the Christ because even though they probably trying to take the money, or uh, uh, the pastors take the money, you know what I'm saying? They will give back or whatever. What they give back? I'm saying some churches. I'm okay, okay. All, I got you. I got you. You said you said that it's hard to push back because you got generations that have been passed down and passed down. This this religion, the way we think. Did he come from that same past down? It was passed down to him too, right? It was passed down to me, right? It was passed down to him, right? It was passed down to him. It was passed down to him. So you can break that generational curse. You can break that cycle. Watch this. Go to uh, 1 John 3 and 4. Let's see. You can break the cycle. You just got to want to. You got to see that the times of these times are getting worse and worse and worse. A woman can't even go to Walmart and buy Similac for their baby. Right. Because the shelves are empty. Read that. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin, transgressing also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So it said sin is breaking God's laws. A lot of us are in sin because we don't know God's laws. Right? And let's see, how do we get back to uh, ruling this world? Read me Deuteronomy 28 and 1, then jump to 15. Because you said it's hard. I want to help you out real quick. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. No, we, no, we, we, so when we out here, we like to talk to the, the whole, it's the whole nation of people. Because if it was just about one person, we all repenting, we'd be gone. God don't care about one person. He wants the nation to repent. The nation of Israel got to come back to really, truly keeping the commandments and loving one another. Right. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligent, diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. It, said, it shall come to pass if we observe and do all his commandments. What are we going to do? Which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. It earth. said if we do his commandments, he's going to set us on high above all nations. So why aren't we on high above all nations? Watch this, verse 15. Verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto oh, this is that two-way street. He gave us one option. If you do, I'm going to set you on high above all nations. Now he's going to come back again and say, if you don't, this is what's going to happen. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, all these what? Curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. He said, if you don't do what I say, all these curses are going to overcome you and overtake you. So do y'all take care of y'all people like Jesus did, his people, like everybody in your brotherhood, like, is they taken care of, is they not want for nothing? Of course, correct. Okay. Correct. Because that seems like that's the only way to get to the 
This this is where you get your hope. But a lot of people, our generation, we not the words, we looking at what we can see. My generation, I'm just being honest, you can read. I understand how old are you? All day, I'm 24. We got brothers out here younger than you. That's your younger than you right there, generation. We got brothers out here younger than you out here doing this word, that believe in this word. So we understand. Oh, no, but the thing is, they got to want to do for themselves as well. You can't do for somebody who don't want to do for themselves. And that's just true. That's just what it is. You can't. I can't tell you, hey, we're going to be the greatest people on this earth if we keep the commandments, but yet you still want to sell drugs. Right. I can't. You, that means you don't care. So what, what's the point of me caring? But watch this. Go to Surat 37 and 12. That's due to good, a godly man. Watch this. Surat 37 and 12. Read that. This is the book of Surat, chapter 37 and verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. You see what the Bible just said? But be continually with a godly man. Said, be continually with a godly man who do what? Whom knowest, whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So that's who you got to deal with. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Because a godly man ain't going to let you sin. Because we ain't supposed to, according to the Bible, we ain't supposed to eat pork. We ain't supposed to smoke weed. A woman ain't supposed to wear pants. But so if I see you about to do that, a godly man ain't going to stop you like, hey, sis. Put that port down, what you doing? Right, right, right. I thought you wanted to rule this earth. What you doing? Instead of making excuses, we're going to give you a solution. Because it's easy to say, my generation ain't doing this. But when you can look, I got, we got brothers out here, that generation. Right. It's easy to make an excuse. But God don't, give a, God don't care about all the excuses. Watch this. Go to Luke 1247. Let's prove it with the Bible. Let's prove it with the Bible. Luke 1247. Read that. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12 and verse 47. Verse 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself. It said the servant that know his Lord's will, that know he must keep the commandments except he didn't want to do it. He prepared and prepared himself. What happened? Then, hold on, I'm going to read from the top again. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, uh -huh. shall be beaten with many stripes. So he's going to get his judgment. As he should, right? He know what he's supposed to do, but he don't want to get right. He going to get his judgment. But read on. Verse 48. But he that knew not. But he that knew not. And did commit things worthy of stripes. Shall be beaten with few stripes. He still get judgment too. Nobody know what few stripes is. It could be wrapped to a pole. You paralyzed from neck down. Right, right. Nobody knows. So God ain't about excuses. Because you got to think about it. He gave us so many times. 40, you said 40 years on this earth to, to get right. Titus 2. Titus 2 and 11. Titus 2 and 11. Because the church teaches grace, 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 grace. But eventually, grace got to run out. Right. Because look, if you got a cell phone and you laid on your phone bill, but they give you a grace period to pay it. What if you don't pay it within that grace period? They cut you off. Let's see what God say. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation. It said the grace of God does bring salvation because he gives you a chance to get yourself right. Read. Have appeared to all men, uh -huh. teaching us that denying ungodliness. You're supposed to teach us do what? Denying ungodliness. You're supposed to deny all ungodliness. So we got to find out what is godliness. The church ain't teaching what's godliness. Because they teaching on Sunday. That's not even the Lord's Sabbath day. That's, that's strike one. Right there. Then they got this image in there. That's strike two. Right. So if they got if they teach you on the wrong day, they got the wrong image of Christ in there. What well, it's all gotta be wrong, right? That foundation is wrong. So therefore, a lot of our brothers and sisters grew up in church and now they sell drugs. They sell their body. They sell other people's body. They kidnap it. They rob it. I know this because I did some of those things and I grew up in the church. I've been to a church. he been to a church. he been to a church. But I guarantee we all wasn't no virgins up in there. Nope. You got to believe it because there ain't no foundation on the laws of God in those churches. Right. Read. Teaching us that deny ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly. We're supposed to live what? Soberly. Everybody popping pills on lean. Is that sober? Smoking, smoking tree from beginning to end, sun up to sundown. Is that sober? Read. Righteously and godly in this present world. In this present world. Go to, because look, everybody wants to say, I'm not perfect. I can't be perfect. Give me that first Kings 8 and 61. 
1 Kings 8 and 61, because they always say, well, well, I can't be perfect. But let's see what the Bible says. Yep. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8 and verse 61. Let your heart therefore be perfect. It said, let your mind therefore be perfect, because your heart do never pump blood. But where your mind, this is your thinking. Let your mind before be therefore perfect, read, with the Lord our God, uh -huh. to walk in his statutes. How do you be perfect? To walk in his statutes. You got to be keeping the commandments of God. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example.